Are you in a state of comfortable failure? Maybe is your company, your community, your government? I mean, the concept of comfortable failure is kind of foreign for a lot of people, but it is a topic that is going to have to come up in just about every single conversation due to the impact of AI on our lives. But before I get into today's conversation, I do have to give a shout out. I was sent cardboard VR from Top Maxian Cardboard VR. And then what looks like it is a Google product, but I think the manufacturer is who sent it to me. So Yin Kai Ching, uh, they actually sent me one as well. So if you are looking for how to implement VR and you're not already a people work customer, because people work customers um, who download our people app and who are on the corporate side and doing VR job uh, exploration. We already include that as part of our package and maybe now we can help do even more cost efficiencies if we get down to something that works uh, with cardboard, which would be super cool. So today's conversation, what really is a follow along with the concept of how AI is going to challenge our relevancy or how relevant we are. And don't get me wrong, it's not in the sense of, am I as a human being important, but it's really is your working style, your philosophy of life, how you do business, how you think of things, is that relevant anymore? AI is more than likely going to just push out the concept or way of life that allows for comfortable failure. Some people believe that it's going to be a way to create a bigger economic divide, but actually studies are showing that it's more about a mentality divide. And this is what I mean. Humans have a long history of manipulating information and situations to get what they want. But with AI, when you start to shrink the distance between a snake oil salesman and hope, or people who want money and need to give money and get money, or even when you think of the, the idea of what it means to be in a state of comfortable failure and actually pushing towards accomplishing missions, what would you do in situations where your own conduct, the way you did things, the relevancy of your mentality really was being forced to morph into something really better and more beneficial for everyone, but really would cause you to be more transparent. Let's just take three out of the four major components of life, society. The three being education, government, and work. The fourth is really communication and how we communicate, but we'll save that for another time. And people work is really passionate about connecting and being the center point of education, government, and work to benefit individuals. So it kind of makes sense for, for our conversations. Education. In the United States, you can run across a plethora of teachers and how they are telling you what their relevancy is. You can talk to administrators and how they're operating institutions and connecting really administrative processes and how relevant they are. Well, in the United States, I have children that were raised in the public school system and I've done work with a lot of public educators. On one extreme, you have teachers and administrators that are just like, we're good, it's comfortable failure. And then you have others that are so passionate but so exhausted from the political system that prevents them from really focusing on their success in their profession as a teacher and their passion for learning and the success of students that they just, they just don't have it in them anymore. Now let's fast forward or let's look differently at another country. China, for example. China isn't wasting time with putting money towards gun safety, even though that is important, they just don't have to address the issue, or paying for buildings that are no longer relevant. And they're certainly not challenging whether or not technology has a place in school or really figuring out what is the definition of emotional intelligence or where it finds its place in a learning institution, they've already done all of the really great thinking and now they've applied it to their kindergartners 
who are learning how to be smarter than the computers that they work with, that are learning how to embrace their emotional intelligence, and that having a conversation is more about understanding than trying to find a defensive perspective. Now let's take government. In the AI era, the relevancy of how government governs is certainly going to have to evolve. It really isn't about whether or not government is relevant. We know that government is relevant. Human beings need governing. It's just part of the way that we work and it actually helps us when we are governed well. And the AI era is going to help us redefine what being governed well is. For example, when you evaluate countries that actually adopt technology faster and quicker than other countries, you're going to see this interesting correlation between gross domestic product, financial prosperity, and being rated by their own citizens as a happy or welcoming place to live. The ironic part is that we're really not talking about AI for bad or government using the information that is gained from data systems and AI in a negative way. It's about helping government become more efficient, effective when it comes to the citizen's safety, how we distribute tax dollars, and how we really evolve what laws should be still laws in the first place so that we know the difference between people who are really doing life in just a certain way or whether or not they're really, really hurting society. I mean, there's no real easy way to say that. But with the AI era and the way that government is going to evolve, it'll be interesting to see how we as citizens maybe get a chance to appreciate government in a new way. Now let's take work. Most people are already feeling the impact as a company hiring or an organization and as individuals doing work, the impact of any technology, let alone AI. So the way that people are already using pretty sophisticated technology is when you open your phone and you use face recognition, uh, when you save your passwords and your passwords should never be saved by the way, because that's a security issue. But if your passwords are being saved that they can put somewhere in a data wallet and you can do really almost anything with a lot of different sophisticated software programs that are really just the foundation of AI and it's only going to accelerate from there. So if you didn't think that you were an employer already using some form of, or your business wasn't already impacted by AI, I would challenge you to think again and reevaluate. And if you're a person and you're thinking about just the job and that you do today, what did you do differently that you weren't doing, you know, two or three years ago? And so the relevancy of this relationship or how relevant we think of the relationship between uh, businesses or organizations and individuals has already been changing. And this is what I mean. The employer used to be the number one deciding factor in a individual's ability to earn, learn, have healthcare and connect to their community. No longer is that the case. With just about any app, including PeopleWorks app, an individual can get connected to the right person at the right time, variety of income sources, access to a plethora of ways to get healthcare of all different types and varieties, and be able to accomplish their work, earn, learn, and connecting goals really independent of what the company uh, and what the company offers or aspires or their talent systems. And that's really been happening in tiny little pockets more and more. So the idea historically that HR and talent management and recruiting is really owned in t inside of a company and that once you have your employees, they're going to be owned and you're going to retain them forever. It's just not relevant anymore. That's not the way people work. And in fact, organizations even move much faster than that typically these days. So when it comes to our uh, education system, our government, and the way that we work, it isn't about you being relevant. It is about you thinking differently to become relevant in the AI era. 
I am Kim Kelly, the CEO and co-founder of PeopleWork. Thanks for joining us today. And if you've had your own struggles with your own ideals or the way that you thought the kind of the world existed, put them in the chat, share with us. We want to go on this journey of change with you and maybe you can create a new topic for us to talk about. Thanks for joining.